Hey guys, it's Jennifer from Breakthrough Maths and today I'm going to show you how you do indices part two. So this is going to be applying everything we learned in part one, but just on a bit more of a difficult question, but nothing we cannot achieve. So looking at our question, we're going to have to find the value of M. So our first check is always going to be to see if we've the same common base throughout the question, which we can see we do. We have a common base of B. Okay, so there's many different ways that you can come at this question. I'll show you two of those ways. So one of the ways you can do is starting off by moving the B over to the right hand side to get rid of the dividing on the left. That will leave you with B to the power of M by B to the power of minus two is equal to B to the power of 10. And what will happen the B when it moves over? Well, it'll change from divide to multiplied by B. Okay, now we get into our question and we see what rules we have to use. So we see that we have multiplying on both sides and we learned from part one that multiplying means that you have to add the powers. So we'll add our powers on the left hand side first. So m plus minus two and on the right we'll have b to the power of 10 plus one. And now you might be saying, Jennifer, where did that one come from? Well, we just have b here, which means it's automatically b to the power of one. So anything by itself just means it's to the power of one. So the number three means it's three to the power of one. It's the same thing. It's just multiplying it by one. So we have to remember that here. So we're not adding on plus zero or just keeping it at 10. We have to remember we have to add on a one here because b by itself is b to the power of one. Okay, carrying on from here and simplifying what we have in the powers, here we'll have m minus two because minus by plus gives us a minus. Then we'll have 10 plus one, which will give us b to the power of 11. And now that we have b to the power of something equals b to the power of something else, we can drop our base. So we'll have m minus two is equal to 11. So m is going to be 11 plus two, which means m is equal to 13. Okay, another way of doing this now. We're used to doing an algebra keeping our x's to the left, or our unknowns to the left, and moving everything else to the right. So we'll do that here. We'll put m b to the power of m by itself on the left, and move everything else over. So the b to the power of 10 stays where it is. We're going to have to move b and b to the power of minus 2. So we know what happens when we move b. We've done that already. It changes to multiply by b. And b to the power of minus two is being multiplied on the left, so it will be divided on the right. Okay, now using our rules of indices, we'll do the multiplying first, and we'll deal with that. So we'll have b to the power of m is going to be adding the powers here, because we're being multiplied. So b to the power of 10 plus one, because here is b to the power of one. So that's what we did beforehand, divided by b to the power of minus two. So simplifying that, we have b to the power of m is equal to b to the power of 11 divided by b to the power of minus 2. Okay, what rule do we have to use next? We see we have a divide sign now, which means you have to subtract the powers. So b to the power of m is going to be equal to b to the power of 11 minus minus 2, because we're subtracting when we have a divide sign. And simplifying that leaves us with b to the power of m is equal to b to the power of 11 plus 2 because minus by minus gives us a plus, which leaves us with b to the power of m is equal to b to the power of 13. And then same thing as before, we have b to the power of something equals b to the power of something else. So we drop our bases and we see that m is equal to 13.